This is Plant-Based Briefing, what farm subsidies are and why they matter, explained. Part 1 by Bjorn Olofsson at sentientmedia.org. And I'm Marian Erickson. This is the Plant-Based Podcast, where I curate, get permission, and narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. Today's article is a bit longer than that, so it's a two-parter. I'm reading part one today, and part two will be tomorrow. It's from sentientmedia.org. They're a nonprofit news organization changing the conversation around animal agriculture across the globe. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. What farm subsidies are and why they matter, explained. Part one by Bjorn Olofsson at sentientmedia.org. Farm subsidies often get cited as a reason for the problems in our food system. But what exactly are farm subsidies? A subsidy is money from the government that is intended to keep the price of a commodity low. In the agriculture industry, there exist a whole slew of farming subsidies designed to help out farms and keep prices low, including direct payments, commodity purchases, and disaster payments. Unfortunately, many subsidies said to be paid to struggling family farmers are actually a way to subsidize the largest farm operations and businesses in the world, especially boosting the meat industry rather than the production of fruits and vegetables. The majority of farm subsidies go toward producing feed for animal agriculture. David Simon writes in his book Meatonomics that these subsidies are largely for the production of meat, Nearly two-thirds of the government farming support goes to the animal foods that the government suggests we limit, while less than 2% goes to the fruits and vegetables it recommends we eat. When did farm subsidies start? Modern farm subsidies originated in the Great Depression, as the U.S. government tried to protect the American people through social spending like the New Deal. This included the Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933, which in part paid farmers to destroy any surpluses. The idea of subsidizing farmers' output stuck, and many such laws were subsequently passed in the 20th century and beyond. How much money is spent annually on farm subsidies? Looking at data from the Environmental Working Group, Meatonomics, and Open Philanthropy Project, we can estimate the breakdowns of U.S. agricultural subsidies, both local and federal, all adjusted for inflation. Animal agriculture subsidies are broken down as follows. Direct animal subsidies, 22.8%. Environmental workarounds, 57.6%, direct plant subsidies, 19.6%, and alternative protein, 0%. According to data from Meatonomics, the U.S. spends $50.17 billion on animal agriculture every year, including state, local, and federal subsidies, while plants for human consumption receive about $24.69 billion. The meat industry dodges between $80 and $200 billion in environmental costs. According to the Environmental Working Group, alternative proteins net around 30 million, too small to be seen, on the chart. That means the U.S. spends an estimated 75 billion per year from all levels of government on direct agricultural subsidies. Keep in mind that exact numbers are hard to pin down by design. Not only is the meat industry highly unregulated, but transparency is getting worse. Under the Trump administration, the USDA stopped publishing the names of farm subsidy recipients and has not responded to environmental groups' requests for clarity. As a result, billions of dollars are publicly unaccounted for. Ultimately, if you pay taxes in the United States, you're funding animal agriculture. In 2019, the federal government received $3.46 trillion from taxpayers and spent about $17 billion in commodity purchases. That means for every $100 Americans paid in taxes, about 50 cents directly funds factory farming. Globally, the situation is similar. According to a 2021 UN report, the agriculture industry is given about $540 billion every year. How are farmers subsidized? Farmers are subsidized in many different ways, including by local, state, and federal governments. Here's a breakdown of the main categories. Direct payments. The federal government gave direct payments to farmers from 1996 to 2014 of about $5 billion per year. Payments were given regardless of what farmers grew and were based on historical production data from 1986. The direct payment program in the 1996 Farm Bill that set up these subsidies was created to help move farmers from subsidized farming to free market model. The 2014 Farm Bill ended direct payments. Counter-cyclical payments. 
The Counter-Cyclical Payments, CCP's program, was a government payment based on the prices for specific crops. Like the direct payment system, CCP's formulas were based on historical data and not current production data. So, if a farmer's land was producing cotton at the time when the base acreage was calculated, the current owner will get a cotton CCP, regardless of what he is or is not growing currently. The 18 crops for which direct and countercyclical payments were made were barley, corn, grain sorghum, oats, canola, cram, flax, mustard, rapeseed, safflower, sesame, sunflower, peanuts, rice, not wild rice, soybeans, cotton, and wheat. These crops are known as commodity crops, and the five largest crops, corn, soy, wheat, cotton, and rice, are known as the Big Five. These commodity crops receive disproportionate subsidies as a result of federal lobbying during the passing of the 1990 Farm Bill. Both direct and countercyclical payments were established in the 2002 Farm Bill and administered by the USDA's Farm Service Agency. CCPs were replaced with a new system of countercyclical payment for farmers when crop prices fall below certain levels, made up of agricultural risk coverage, ARC, and price loss coverage, PLC, payments in the 2014 Farm Bill. Marketing Loans, LDPs, and Certificates The logic behind the government marketing loans to farmers is to prevent them from dumping their corn on a glutted market at harvest time. The farmers can keep their crops in reserve and sell them when they're needed and will fetch a higher price. In this program, farmers use their crops as collateral. They can sell their crop at any time. If they sell when the price of their crop is high, they can repay the loan with cash. When prices are below the target price set by the program, the farmer can repay the loan at a lower rate, keep the difference between that and the full loan, and retain the crop to sell at a higher price. Instead of taking on a marketing loan, farmers can also opt for a loan deficiency payment, or LDP. This is a direct payment of the amount the farmer would have received if they had taken a loan on the crop and repaid at the lower repayment rate when prices were down. Commodity certificates are another option for farmers who do take loans. They can purchase these generic commodity certificates and use them to repay their loans. Average Crop Revenue Election Program, ACRE Federal lawmakers created the ACRE program as part of the 2008 Farm Bill. It paid farmers a minimum revenue whether losses were due to low prices, poor weather, or other circumstances, and limited these farmers' access to other subsidies. U.S. legislators ended this program with the 2014 Farm Bill and replaced it with the Agricultural Risk Coverage Program, which pays farmers when actual crop revenue declines below a specified guaranteed level. The ARC and PLC programs are eligible to producers of 22 crops, including dry peas, lentils, chickpeas, and temperate japonica rice. Disaster Payments Almost every year, Congress appropriates large sums of money to pay farmers who have experienced losses due to natural disasters. The payments averaged more than $1 billion per year from 1996 to 2010. Multiple disaster payment programs have been created for sectors of the farm industry, especially for livestock producers. Crop insurance. Most farmers make more money from crop insurance than they pay into it. The Federal Crop Insurance Program was created in 1938, but it was greatly expanded in 1980 and has since become a major source of cash for farmers. For the most part, crop insurance policies pay farmers if they experience a decline in revenue or a loss in crop yields. From 1995 to 2020, about 76% of crop insurance payments went to producers of just four crops, corn, soybeans, wheat, and cotton, most of which ended up as animal feed. You just listened to What Farm Subsidies Are and Why They Matter, Part 1, by Bjorn Olofsson at sentientmedia.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Tune in tomorrow for the second half of this article, where you'll hear what percentage of U.S. farms are subsidized, how many subsidies do farmers get, are farm subsidies necessary, who benefits most from farm subsidies, and criticisms of farm subsidies. And please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.